Warlords, nothing but warlords. Oh, it's Amigos, on. episode 344. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm disgusting with that opening tune you just sang. Today, and Aaron. Aaron. Yes. We're talking about Warlords. Oh, man. Now, Aaron, is the spear the ultimate finishing move the in wrestling? Why does that have to do with anything to do with Warlords? Because when you're a Warlord, you hold the spear. Listen, there's too much wrestling you talk know. on this show, and I never thought I'd say that. There's, a, there's This has nothing to do with wrestling in any way. I've been thinking about this open all week. That was the first, when I fired up Warlords and I saw the guy holding the spear. You know there's a guy called the Warlord. Really? Yeah, he's a big, bald, six foot six, six foot eight. Huge muscular guy. He was, Technical worker. He was horrible. Oh. He was horrible at his you job. You know, many people think that Goldberg was one of the best technical wrestlers ever because of his career in the in the college athletics scene. He was in college athletics. He jumped yourself into a corner there, didn't you? No, I knew it. He played football. Yeah, and yeah. pro for the Atlanta Falcons. But no, no one thinks that. In fact, he's famous for getting humiliated technically by a better wrestler in a match. Can that happen? Sure. If they don't like you, they'll just make you look dumb or put you in a hold you can't get out of. Mm. It happens all the time. Mm. You would find that out, I would wager. So, you never answered my question. Is the spear the ultimate finishing move in wrestling? No, it's not. It's not the ultimate finishing move because it's fake. The ultimate finishing move could be a punch if you if they made it cool enough. That's the beauty of fake. But the spear is like he just runs into him real hard. Right. How is that even a move? You can do that at the supermarket to an old woman if you're not paying attention. Or in a parking lot. You can do it anywhere. Have you ever speared somebody? Yeah. Accidentally, violently speared people. Sure. Hmm. They just get in your way. Did you ever play football in school? Like touch football or yeah, tackle football? Play, yeah. Yeah. I play a little Did touch. you ever slaughter anybody with a spear? No. I I, I, I tend to not like run into people. Because they're, I mean, if you run into somebody, they're going to run into you back. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem with the spear. Yeah. What if you hit someone that's bigger and meaner than you? Then you look like a geek and you hit a wall and then you're down. Yeah. Do you have a favorite warlord? <laughs> well, no. There's a comic book called Warlord. I'm talking about I like sold all those. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great. I was gonna say I can't name any warlords. So, so of those two, I would say I like. I would say, well, Genghis Khan. He's a pretty violent guy. I would go with Alexander. We don't the really Great. have any American warlords, do we? Uh, well, no. I don't think you could really because when you think of a warlord, you think someone that's personally tough. Mm-hmm. You know, like for example, Genghis Khan, you could physically see him like you could see him physically like ripping a dude's head off. I saw that in know, Bill and Ted. Or something like that. But like think of the great like army men of our time. The most of them are old. Yeah, that's they're true. They're not anywhere near the front of the pack, and they're not gonna hurt anyone in a in a in a fight. You know, they're old men. That's mm-hmm. about, but they're they're wise. That's why they're up there. It's not like the old days, because no one got old. Yeah, these are like scholarly warlords. That's well, I mean, that's the thigh on, on it, you know. Yeah. But I mean, like, can you imagine like Patton spearing a guy in combat? <laughs> you know what I mean? MacArthur. <laughs> Those guys are they freak a hip doing yeah. that. You can't do that stuff. That's true. That's true. Well, they could have played the Amiga version of Warlords, couldn't they? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure how well, given some of the <laughs> some of their output in real life. I'm not sure how well they do both. Let's see if we do any better, Aaron. Let's talk about Warlords. You know. Uh, this is one boat I'd actually heard of. Before, in other words, for a, a turn-based strategy game, I knew about this game, which is stunning because you know how often I play these. And, and because I mentioned it last week, the Chud, our good buddy the Chud, he's a big fan of this series. You know, I was I was going to mention him because, you know, I, I like his finishing move where he sits down on you when you're sitting on the chair. I always I, love when he I like that. his finishing move where he sits on the couch and just falls asleep. He's got a he's got a couple. Good he's got ones. a couple ones. That's when when he gets real bored at the users meeting. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Warlords boat uh, released uh, on the Amiga in '91. I'm pretty sure uh, that this was ported over from the uh, PC uh, VGA release. Uh, this had a uh, was two discs and had a maximum number of eight. Players, which we'll yeah. get into. That's that's got to be one of the few games we've played that will let you do that. Uh, this was published and developed by SSG. I looked into SSG uh, just for fun uh, to see what the scoop was on SSG, and they were a uh, they didn't do a ton on the Amiga. Uh, they did uh, Gold of the Americas, pretty good. Where Seems is like that another go- strategy title. It's at Fort Knox, right? That's the only yeah. place we got gold. 
Halls of Montezuma, mm -hmm. right? Uh, these are some epic names. Yeah. Listen, uh, go big or go home. Banzer, uh, pa Banzer, Panzer Battles. It's Banzer Paddles. <laughs> Man, that's you don't want to take a spanking from a Banzer Paddle. That's either a tank game or a dragon game, or and maybe both. And I like this one. Reach for the stars. That's their uplifting. Line. Which I do. I think that's. I think that's. I think that's real nice. Uh, so, uh, uh, SSG by the way stands for Strategic Studies Group. That's kind of. Uh, that's pretty thick. Well, that's yeah. not what I'd call my name, my game company. What? Well, what would you call yours? Awesome Games International. Well, listen, I don't want to tell you. These guys are out of Pensacola, Florida. Oh, by the way, not too many. Not. I think this is the first for us to come yeah. out of Pensacola. Uh, you, as the United States developer, uh, I looked over what they'd done, and according to our friends at Moby, uh, their most first of all, they did the all the Warlords. Their most popular games uh, were the Warlords Two. Uh, Reach for the Star and Panzer Battles, but all the Warlords were mentioned in there. Uh, and unfortunately, the Amiga only got the one uh, boat. Uh, this was worked on by a fellow named Steve Faulkner. In fact, he did m pretty much almost everything. The, his, the, only, the, uh, the other fellow that worked on was a guy named Roger Keating. He was responsible for the uh, much ballyhooed AI in this. Okay. So he was he, that was sort of his co contribution, but the rest of it, Faulkner was pretty much a one man band. Mm. He did coding, graphics, music, everything. It was one guy. So that's kind of a throwback. The only thing he didn't do was the box art, which I think the box art's pretty good on yeah, this. Yeah. Nick, this is a one of these names here, but the box art done by Nick Stathop. Polis. Mm. I think I got that right. You want Staff of Polis. Staff of Polis. I think you can get a shot for that, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, and this also released uh, on DOS uh, in the VGA and EGA, because God knows you need an EGA version. Although you could probably get away with this, it. This game you could totally do it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how to describe this? But why don't you give this a shot? The description of the game. Yeah, this is a turn-based strategy game. Uh, that uh, it, it eschews the four X's and leaves you with only one big X, and that X is exterminate. Yeah. Um, if you uh, imagine civilization, but you take out all of the culture, all of the art, all of the religion, and you just leave the uh, you leave the combat mechanics in. Yeah. That's what that's what warlord. It's is. not called diplomat. No. It's not called artisan. No. Or architect. <laughs> It's as soon as you start this game, it just says "prepare for war." That's right. And and then whenever you actually attack someone, there's a big, huge cartoon explosion. War! It says so. They don't. Oh, I mean, they embrace that. Yeah. Which I, yeah. You know, hey, if you're gonna embrace it, I'm cool with it. Uh, this game is an interesting game. You get you basically pick from eight different, uh, I guess, character types or or yeah, or, or nations. They're or, nations. Uh, yeah. yeah. And. Uh, You've got eight choices, and here's the way it works. It lists all eight on the screen. You can, and they're all listed as knight. There are, there's knight, there's, uh, there's like four, it four different difficulties, knight, and there's oh, a middle no, one, I and warlord is one. It seems like there's a lot, because when you set up the game at the beginning, you click through, like you click human, and then if you accidentally click twice, you go through all the different difficulty levels. I think Brig Brigand is one of them. Yeah, there's there, there, uh, there, there, there's there's a lot of difficulty levels. Now here. I I dwell down in the night zone. Yeah. In fact, if they'd had like peasant, I'd have been. There. I was working on my night moves the whole yeah. week. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so anyway, you can pick any of these eight you want, and and you can and you can set it, and you can actually go through. If you're playing by yourself, for example, you could set. Some of the nations to a real high difficulty, mm -hmm. some to a real low. You it's can great. mix and match. It's great. You know, you can also have up to eight human players. Mm -hmm. So you could literally turn every one of these people to human and just play a hot seat game of Warlords with seven of your buddies. Very cool. Uh, it would. I, I, you could. You could see how it would work. I mean, it would. You know, you could do. Well, it. I mean, physically, it would be somewhat difficult because it's yeah. hard to seat seven people around a right. computer. Right. But I mean, you could just keep praying. But them yeah, in. if you're at a party and you're hanging out, you got some people lounging about on the couch. When it's your turn, you get up, you saunter over to the computer. You know what this reminded me of? Did you ever? Play, I remember I, me and Jamie and Brent played this game. It was. It, we were playing uh, Puerto Rico, I think it was through email. Yeah. Like this game, you could absolutely play a turn-based version. Where you just do a move a day. Well, that's exactly like that. what this game is. Is yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. So once you've picked out one of your 
uh, nations. And these things, these are like your fantasy nations here. You've got your uh, storm giant or stone giants and your dwarves and your elves. There's like Bane humans. Lord or something. There's all, there's yeah. a, all the colors of the rainbow mm -hmm. represented. It's funny when you go through all the descriptions of the people, like most of them aren't nice. Right. And I'm not sure any of them are nice. Well, they're going to war. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like, oh, this is the noble race. They're, no. they're all like, like, yeah, like we want you off our land. We're exterminating you. Mm -hmm. Because the name of this game is killing. There, when you when the game well, the name of the game is war. Well, when the game starts, there are basically eighty places on the board, eighty cities that you can conquer. You, and the you win this game in a, one of two ways, really. You conquer all the cities, and exterminate all your opponents, or you conquer all the cities that aren't destroyed. That's right. That's the game. There's no like make peace. No, no, that crap. No, there's no diplomatic victory. There's yeah. no technological victory. None of that stuff. And the, the funny thing is, there's a diplomatic table, and all it does is tell you who hates you and how much. Right. There's nothing like they're the, suing for peace. The name, <laughs> the name of the table is called hatreds. <laughs> so, is it? It's, yeah. It's called hatreds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go then. So. What you, if, where, where's your hatreds table at? Yeah, right? no kidding. I'd, I'd need I'd need four or five pages to write that down. So once the once you assume you're playing a one player game, the game begins, and it starts you in your city right, at your castle, and it will ask you, okay, what should we be making here with our mm -hmm. stash of money? And this is where you determine what kind of uh, troops you want to or uh, want to have produced. And better troops cost more money and take longer. And they also cost more to upkeep because right. you have an upkeep cost. And also, you'll find that as you go through the game, the different cities will allow you to build different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, on this tentative first turn, uh, you'll find that once you start the city building something, you've got a hero. Every game starts with you having a hero, which you get to name your yeah. hero, which is cool. It also helps you keep track of where these guys are. And then you can take off. There's a huge map. On the right of the screen, there's an overhead map of the entire world. And on the left-hand side, is a close-up. Uh, on the right-hand side with the entire world map, there's like a magnifying glass. You can sort of move around to kind of see, okay, what's here, what's here, what's here. Everything's color-coded. It's not too bad, really. The way they've got it set up, it's okay. Um, your movement is based on the character you've got and the terrain he goes in. And so if you're walking on the road, you're good to go. It just takes one a movement point to move on the road. If you're walking through the mountains, for example, that, the ones that you can get past, it might take five to mm -hmm. go through those because so, you're going in mountains. It makes sense, right? Right. Um, and at the game, as you finish your turn moving your guy, you'll hit end. And then depending on what option you've got set, you'll see what everyone else does. Now, there's two ways to go about this. You could either have it where it doesn't go blow by blow of what they do. It just gives you sort of a summary. Or you could have it show them moving and doing everything you just did. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, depending on, uh, which did you play with, by the way? I did a little bit of both. I did too. Did you? Could you get away with the short version or did you always use the long version at the end of the day? Uh, I, well, to be honest with you, yeah. and we're going to go into this in a second, but uh, these games are not short games. No, they're these not. These games take a long time to play. So I had to, so I can kind of move things through. Yeah. I took off the watch the guy do. There's no fog of war in this game. No. Uh, you see exactly what's going on everywhere. Yeah. So it's something to keep in mind. And, and really, you could turn you could turn off the blow by blow mm -hmm. and still be okay. But I would suggest, like the first couple games I played this, I left it on because I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the object of the game is to occupy as many castles as or all the castles, right, and kill all the enemies. What is that? How do you do it? Well, you'll you will create troops that will march along this landscape uh, and you'll move them to the castle you want and then you will try to occupy it. If there's uh, no one in there, it's a neutral castle that you could try to obtain. There's still guys in there to fight you. Yeah, they, they, it's, it's sort of weird. There's You never just kind of waltz into a castle. There's yeah. always people there. They never explain who these people are. They're, they're just like neutral they're, actors. They're the neutral. So, yeah. or they're, I guess they're just the people. They're Who knows? They're just people that are an affiliated city. Well, you're affiliated now, pal. Yeah. Uh, well, you're allow dead. me to affiliate with my with my knife. Right. So once you uh, attack a city, you go into the combat phase of this. And Well, don't panic. The combat phase doesn't have you do anything except stand there while it shows all your guys on a, in a box. Mm -hmm. And then slowly they whittle down until, you, until whatever's left is there. And if you win the city, you win the, your flag goes up in the city, it turns to your color on the mm -hmm. map, you're good to go. And, you, and sometimes you'll find 
gold that you've looted mm -hmm. in the city uh, that you just took. Uh, and then, it'll, of course, it'll ask you, hey, what should this city be producing? Because clearly the people in the city quickly change their allegiances well, once yeah. you show up. It's amazing at the, <laughs> at the, at the tip of the sword. It's funny how it oh, works. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, of course, this is not just a, a huge map of land. There's also water and rivers uh, all over the place in this and, and little inlets. And so amongst the things you can build are boats. Uh, in fact, you have to build them unless you, because there aren't a lot of bridges in the game. And you might have to hike your guys eight kabillion miles to mm. get to the nearest bridge. And so you can use boats to transfer troops, which is, they're almost like bridges. You have to, got to have some boats. I right. usually built them as soon as I could mm -hmm. to get some boats going. You're going to realize early on, and I want to get your thoughts on, the, on your strategy here in a second, boat. but one thing that you realize early on in this game is the first thing you've got to do is expand at an alarming rate. Yeah. You've got to capture as many of these castles early as you can because as the game rolls on, these castles, these cities, are generating new troops. Sometimes you'll move the troops out of your city, or, and the enemy will as well. Sometimes you don't. And so early in the game, you might go into a city that's only got a couple uh, troops you've got to deal with. And sometimes you have to, if you wait five or six rounds, there can be five or six extra troops in there. And that's tough. It's tough to beat. Cause, and if you go in there and lose, you, that's your whole, all the time it takes you to get somewhere, you don't want to lose when you get there because you've lost all your guys. You've got to start all over trying to get them back up there. It's a real hassle. So it seemed to me that you had to expand early. Did, is that the way you figured it out too? There's The strategy in this game is very simple. There's no, This is not what you call the world's deepest strategy. Yeah, okay. which is why it sounds like I know what I'm talking about for once. So you have to expand as rapidly as possible because there's no other way for you to ramp up your production. Okay. Yeah. Because when you when you go out to conquer in this game, the only way that you can go out to conquer is just by rolling over guys. Yeah. Okay. And everybody else is doing the same thing. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And so you you've got to do that. And one of the kind of uh, the intro and that this might be the game. This might be the first strategy game that employs this. There's the whole stack mechanic mm -hmm. yeah. in this game where you stack your armies on top of each other and you move as one. I can't remember if the early Civ games had that or not. I can't remember. But this is a way that you can, one, easily move large things around the battlefield because yeah. movement in this game can be somewhat tedious. Yeah. Uh, and two, if you're going on a grand attack, it's useful to not let your opponent know how many people you have in your army. You know, if you've got your wolf riders and your spearmen and all those guys, you can stack them all together and that way he won't know until the attack what's in there. Yeah, and I will say, it took me, I was in my second game before I understood how to stack, because of course I didn't read the docs. Uh, when you've got a guy, let's say I've got a guy, all right, a cavalry man, and I move him to a city, okay? That means that one guy's fighting whatever guys are in there, all right? If I have, uh, if I move uh, four or five cavalry officers and a couple uh, swordsmen on the one square, and then I double-click that group, you remove them all in mass, mm -hmm. and this is vital. Right. It also saves you so much time mm -hmm. uh, moving these guys around. And what's nice to do, and this is what I started doing in my later games, I would gather a fighting force of extraordinary magnitude and be the scourge of the countryside. Now, the downside of that is that you've got one huge body right. for it, and it's hard to get that those guys around to every place. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you got to remember, there's seven other outfits. There's no way to turn off other players in this. You're playing with eight people in a game, whether they're humans or they're AI. And all these other players, are they're locked in combat. Uh, they're t attempting to take over other cities. And so when you think to yourself, my God, I've got to go conquer 80 cities or 79 cities plus your capital. You do, but you're not going to be fighting. You may not fight for the races or the, of the nations in this. They might get overran before you get yeah, there. Yeah, they're going to eliminate themselves yeah, right. before you get there. Um, this is all mouse-based, which is great. Listen, this game does a great job with the interface. I mm -hmm, thought mm -hmm. uh, it's not like boats. This is not. This is my. This is baby's first turn-based. But for me, it was great because it's not too deep. There's not a lot of uh, man production management. Your cities every round they say, okay, should we keep doing this? All right, every round that they produce. And if you say no, 
there's a production window you can go to. You just right click. It when you right click on the screen, it brings up a task bar. Mm -hmm. And you go up there and you just pull down like you would like Windows. And one of those production, you can click on that and you can go through each of the cities you hold and set up their production. Right. Simple. Yeah. I mean that makes all the sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, movements all done with the mouse. It's a mixed bag there. I, I, I think. I, yeah, I would have preferred. I, I'm, I've always been more of a keyboard type guy when you're moving around a game like yeah. this. But it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. How many times did you accidentally move a guy when you're wanting to click on another guy? All the time. Right. Me too. And yeah. so there are. And it's one thing you need to learn is on the screen, amongst the button, there's a set of buttons in the middle of the screen. You really don't, you don't use them that often, no. except for one of them. And the one you use often is next. Right. Because that's how you flip through all of your troops, mm -hmm. and you and you're talking double digits and probably into the triple digits towards the end of the game mm -hmm. of troops. And so this is where stacking becomes important, but it also is how you just get around the map. Because if you've got two troops standing beside each other, and you've got one of them clicked, you're in movement phase. So if you click on the other guy, it's not going to click on him. Your your other guy's going to move towards him because there's a little error that mm -hmm. tells you, and that's where you can get screwed. Yeah, I wish. The, the movement was a little bit easier. And this game desperately needs an undo feature. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, know, there's no reason not to have yeah, one. Right, yeah. <laughs> you should be able to undo anything before you finish taking your turn because it has no bearing on anything That's else. a real good idea, Boat. Actually, I hadn't thought about that. That's a great idea. Um, something else that we didn't touch on that much is that we mentioned that you have a hero. Uh, uh, heroes are tougher and have certain abilities that other normal other soldiers don't have. One of them is the ability to, like, go into ruins and stuff and get artifacts and use artifacts. Uh, did you employ that often? I, every, I time, two... every time I went into a uh, into a temple with yeah. my hero, he was yeah. always killed by a ghost. Yeah, uh, well, I usually would go to the I would go to the ruins and I would try sometimes you'd have to fight something if you beat it, you would get a crown or something mm -hmm. like that that would give you like extra like I saw one to give you uh, extra uh, attack yeah and there's different tiers it's just like any sort of loot based game where you have your common items all the way up to your yeah. ultra rare they don't spell out in the docs whether these are procedurally generated at every game i assume they must be uh it's important to note that this map you're basically playing the same game every time yeah and the way that you make this game interesting is that they've used the geography of the land combined with the traits of each nation yeah to make them sort of evenly balanced so, for example, you've got, if you start with the nation that's up in the upper right corner of the screen, they're surrounded by mountains. That's the, the upper right, the Bane guy. Right. Yeah. And so what you can do there is, because it's so hard to get to you, you can really take your time and build up your forces, because yeah. it's going to be hard for the enemy to cross those mountains. You're physically isolated. Yeah, I like playing the Giants. They, they start in the lower left-hand portion of the screen, and they're fairly isolated, so you can capture all those neutral castles early on. And then you've got access to the bay, and you can, that means you can get those guys, you can get your cities there to start building ships. Mm -hmm. And once you get your ships built, you really have quick access to the majority of the map at that point. Yeah. So that, but I mean, built like you said, building ships is essential in this game for transporting your yeah. troops around. I will say I didn't get to play every nation, and so, but I, but I mean, it is neat how yeah, they've and, got their position. The docs do a good job of of talking about what the strengths and we. This isn't one of these. You'll just have to figure it out for your yeah. own. They, luckily, these guys have some sense, and they tell you what you need to know to sort of get a handle on things early. Because with a game like this, these games, I mean, because you can't... Okay, I'm just going to go in and talk about the things that go, I like. And the go, things go that ahead, go, like. man. Okay. Things that I like about this game is that the, the mechanics are easy to understand. Yes. The UI is good, especially for a game from 1990. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the graphics, they're serviceable. You know, they're not going to knock your socks off. No. You can tell what the things are. You can almost make this game an ANSI. Right. And it certainly could have been on any of the 8-bit machines. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I don't like about the game. The number one complaint I have about this game yeah. is that you have to be able to choose less than eight nations to play it. Because if you, because the games just take forever. Yes. Forever yeah. to play. Okay? And not everybody has forever. I would much rather you be able to take a quarter of this map and be able to play with three or four nations and be able to battle it out more quickly. Because yeah. so much of this game is taken up by capturing those neutral castles, which is more tedious than anything else. Because as long as you go in there with fresh men, 
you're going to be able to take these castles, okay? Yeah. So you spend so much of the time with the buildup of the troop phase, and I get it. Like, if you're real into the strategy thing and you want to amass your troops and that gives you a feeling of power, listen, I understand that. And I'm yeah. with you to a certain extent. But at some point, you want to get in there and start doing some fighting. Okay, and the real fighting where you're going up against another nation. It takes a long time to get to that point. This game reminded me so much of the German board games we used to play. The real, the ones where you, there was a lot of that preliminary, everyone kind of harnessed their powers mm -hmm. early, and then the, the mix up started happening later on. Right. Uh, this you could almost make this a board game. It's very similar to what a board game would These be. These guys definitely came from a tabletop background. Absolutely, yeah. That's what I, when I say board game, Robert, really, I mean that. Yeah. Like a, that sort of a conquest type right. game. Because Miniatures. if you look in the uh, if you look in the docs, there's actually tables of statistics in the back, and it's like nobody that doesn't come from that background would put that in there no. because you just think, yeah, the guys did the math to make this work, but they're like, no, we want to show you the math to show you that this thing is legit. The other thing that I really don't like about this game is how hard it is to uh, to move around. What they should have done was they should have given you multiple levels of zoom on the right side of the screen. Yeah. Because the-, the It's hard to move that power glass to the point where you need to see where you're going. Exactly. Or they should have made it on the left where you could actually have moved around and scrolled the screen. Right. If they don't, right. I agree. So those are the two big complaints I have about this game. One, that the games just take too long to play, and two, that you can't, you don't have the kind of control, the kind of minute control that you need yeah. in sort of a medium zoom scenario. I can't tell me times I'd have to, I'd get a move a troop down just to see what was down there. Right. It's a pain in the butt to move stuff right. I agree with everything you said. These are, this is sort of pity pat stuff that you can still play the game as oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. But this, this is like ease of use type stuff. That really, you could almost make this, the right-hand part of the screen. Here's what I would have done. I would have made the right-hand part of the screen a pop-up. Mm -hmm. And then had the whole screen represented. Absolutely. That way, because you really don't need to have that uh, that overhead view all the time. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why they did it that way. Maybe it was this... I don't know what it was. I, I think have done you it know. Well, I I feel like I can see from a design perspective why they what they would have said. We we're going to show the map the whole time. So you, especially if you're watching the computer, you know you can see in real time as they're moving both plate in both. Yeah, but places. if you if you just had like L, oh or, yeah, or right click and it could just went boop, right, and then when you're done, boop, yeah. and you've got all that real estate because uh, that would have been all, better because you need more real estate than you get, and because the 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 island is immense of the land. You're right about the gameplay time. I mean, you're talking a minimum of two and a half hours. Yeah. Did you ever come close to finishing the game? No. If I got crushed, that's why I, it's not like I played this 50 times. I got in about four or five games this mm -hmm. week. Yeah, about like Because me. you had to sit down. That was like an evening. Yeah. And you're, and yeah. you're, and and you're I done. Mean, and, and here's the thing. There's just, I felt like there was, like, here's the thing with Civ. This is the genius of Civilization. Yeah. Is they put in all of these other things that you can do. And so, like, while you're building production, you can be working on farming, or you can be doing yeah. this, or, oh, hey, a new city thing just popped up. You know, there's always stuff to kind of keep you interested. In this game, you're either moving around, you're attacking stuff, that's it. That's well, the list. The big okay? difference is that this is an eight-player possibility of a game. Sure. And so, well, you can do that you with couldn't, you, you can couldn't, do that with Civ too. Well, I'm not like this though. This is a, it's not. I mean, yes, there is a Civ word to Civ. I see where you're going, but. This is a game, like you said, you said it early in the open. They took out everything except the combat. Right. They said, this is what we're going to have. And to me, I just, I, I, it got boring. Now, I, if there were, if I was playing this with somebody else, would I have gotten bored? Possibly no, but also possibly yes, depending on where our kingdoms were. Like, if we were across the map from each other, yeah. that build-up phase is still going to be there, yeah. no matter how you many You may never see players. the guys yeah. you're playing with. That's, I mean, you're right when you said, like, I think four is a better number with mm -hmm. the option for eight. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no, I think they put, uh, you know, having eight is a, it's almost like a party trick. Mm -hmm. We've got an AI that can that competently control these other kingdoms, plus you could have people in. So, I mean, right. it's a, don't get me wrong, it's quite a feat, you know, uh, and, the, and the computer's not dumb in this either, and that was on dumb guy level. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to guess what it'd be like on mega level. Oh you gosh. get murdered. Yeah. Uh, this is not an easy game, but it's it's manageable you know, if you learn how to play. Another it. thing I wish they would have done is included a way for you to see the strength or the, the the hit points of your your dudes on the screen. 
uh, like they needed a little bar or something, something real simple. Well, it gives you it gives you a number, but it's and it's hard to gauge how if you're going to win or not. Right. It's, a lot of times it's just gamble. Right. You know. Also, you're not sure what the strength in the castle you're going after yep. is. Yeah. You know. So it's a, it's a. But I mean, really, in real life, you wouldn't know either. I mean, technically, you wouldn't. Well, know I mean, you might there. you might do you might send them some spies. Yeah. You know, there were there were. But ways, that'd be a cool then. option to yeah. have. You know, wouldn't it? And again, this game, this series really peaked at two and three. We're both, and so I'm sure if we ever, of course, those are DOS games, but if we were to get to play those both, they, they probably addressed many of the concerns yeah. that we've talked about. With all that said. And, and, you know, Super Tech Boy, he says two and a half hours is nothing compared to like Civ or colonization or whatever. Uh, that's true. Yeah, but That's it's, true. But it all has to do with how much fun you're having while yeah, you're playing. There's a lot more options. Right. And because lot, in Civ, I'm right there with you, man. I've played games of Civ that have lasted more than a full day. Right. Um, you know, not, of course, at one time. But in this game, because there's so few things to do, that two and a half hours seems like two and a half lifetimes. Well, it's just, I, I, I think there's plenty to, I think there's plenty to keep you occupied, except there's, it's not, it's, t there needs to be options where I just don't want to play most games for two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. Now, you could save the game, which I often did. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I played this one a lot on uh, uh, Amiga Forever, so I could just save it and not even worry about anything. You know, that, that, yeah, I, I used FSUAE. I didn't uh, touch and this so, on the I, And so there's no, there's no reason not to play it that way. But, I mean, really, uh, in all honesty, Bo, you know, I'm not the, a fan of these. I'm not even close to being a fan. Uh, but this one, like you said, it's just like an easy... I mean, I picked it up right away, mm -hmm. and I had a good work. The only there were a few things I wasn't one hundred percent sure of, and after reading the docs, I'm still not one hundred percent sure of them. Towers, you can build towers. As far as I could tell, towers would give you an offensive bump. But but I, I, it's some sort of a. But I don't. I mean, did you you know you know what towers building yeah, them? What, yeah. what did they do? There's a lot of stuff like that that's just it's not fully explained. And I wonder if it's because they built something that they couldn't fully explain. No, you know, and, they've got I, I, it, the book says that the towers, and you can turn other people's towers to your flag. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you can capture. You other get towers. some sort of bonus for having towers near your stuff or marking your territory. But I, that was one of the things I didn't quite fathom, and I, God knows I looked, I looked hard. Uh, but and I'm sure there are some advantages to some of the races that I didn't, like I said, I didn't get to play them all, uh, but. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, actually. I really liked the way that they they didn't make all the races equal. Yeah, but they the way that they did it was interesting because they also didn't make it so there were never anybody that you didn't want to pick. Like yeah. even the weakest race because of their location on the map or because of their production speed or because of their unit types. They the the balance in this game is very well done. And the pull down menu stuff, you get you get charts in there. Mm -hmm. You can see how well you're doing or how poorly. Yeah. You know, with they have bar charts that tell mm -hmm. you how your production's going, how you stand in terms of cities. Uh, it also will tell you who hates you. Believe it or not, there's not really any diplomacy in this per se. But if you're gonna if there's a neighbor to your right that despises you and a neighbor to your left that's indifferent to you. You want to go to the right, go take on the ones that hate you, because the Endeavor ones probably won't fool with exactly. you for a while. Exactly. So there's some strategy into that, and multiplayer on this would actually. Have to, we've got to try. It's another one to write down for Boat Fest. Mm -hmm. Get some people together. If we have two and a half hours to kill one day, or or maybe at one of the computer club meetings, because I know the Chud likes this. It might be fun to play this, but again, it's a lot of time to devote to a game like this. Yeah. Too much time. Do we? Uh, do we get any? Oh, I should mention before we get to the Discord stuff. There's a DOS version of this, uh, and guess what? They are ident identical. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're identical uh, uh, to each other. So you could probably... Can you believe that? They're two different versions. Well, right like there. I said, this is probably EGA, because this is definitely... No, no, I'd say it's... Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't because a VGA version, who knows what would you improve? I yeah. mean, in all honesty. Right. You know, uh, it's 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 pretty much plain Jane. Mm -hmm. So what what the Discord people say? Nothing. Both? No one gave this a shot? Nobody gave this a shot. That's surprising because a lot of people really like these games. Well, uh, it's, I it guess might not. be true, but uh, no, I, well, nobody in Discord. Thank goodness for good old Lemon, who jumped all over this. Uh, Lemon, uh, the people there are f very fond of this boat, 8.07. Probably a smidge too high in my book. I'd say this is more of a 7-ish. Uh, yeah, um, the uh, the mag but this is you know again this is this is something that I don't know how many games like this were on the Amiga. You got to keep that in mind. Too. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, I will say 1990. It's early days, right? So that's you know, 
Um, um, so the magazines uh, were fairly in line with the way me and Bo thought of it. Amiga actually gave it 85, Amiga Computing a 70, Amiga Format a 85, Amiga Joker drop kicked it 50, 53, no and surprise. AUI 54. I wonder why they gave this thing such low scores. I don't know. Uh, and CU Amiga get a 77, uh, the magazine average well, 72 I mean, I, I definitely know why. I mean, like, if you think about this as a computer game and not just a uh, computer version of a tabletop war game, there's yeah. a lot to be desired in terms of animation, well, I mean, in terms it, of graphics. I mean, the combat animation is about as low rent as you can get. How many, I mean, graphically, yes. You I can mean, look they could have the, made this look like Battle Chess, and that would have done yeah, a lot better. Yeah, I mean, I, it's funny. I, the thing is... Uh, Knowing what this is, these graphics didn't offend me. Right, but you're right. Graphically, this is something that's low end. I mean, it's just like Rogue. It's you. You sort yeah. of a lot of you. You got to let your mind do some of the uh, the pictures. You know, I looked this up on the eBay just for fun, Boat. Uh, you can get one right now in the UK, thirty one bucks. Take it to the house, or if you're so inclined, there are also a couple more up, sixty two or ninety two bucks, or best offer if you want to pay a little more for some reason. They're there. I looked, and none of these have sold recently. Hmm. Uh, so there you go, boat. Uh, I enjoyed it. I was surprised how much I liked it, considering how much how I am. Uh, but uh, this is another one that uh, I got to give the Chud credit because he harped on this series for years, and now I can see why. I thought it was pretty fun, boat. All right. Well, Aaron, let's leave Warlords and check out what's been going on this week in the world of Amiga news. Oh man, Amiga news time. Amiga news. <laughs> All right, Aaron. First things first, we're going to talk about RoboCop AGA. Oh, man. Now, Aaron, uh, we've talked about this before, but work continues on this game. Were you a big fan of this game in the arcade? Well, I believe this was Data East that made this. It's very similar in the graphic stylings to Bad Dudes. It's got that same sort of, it's got that same sort of art style to it. I like Bad Dudes more. I thought this game was really hard. Uh, but it's it's not bad. I it's interesting it. that you mention this because I think that this is nothing like Bad Dudes. This is like if well, Bad Dudes was an old dude in a wheelchair. No, 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 no. I mean, if I'm not talking about how it plays, just but the the cityscape and stuff. That's the art style. Is what I mean. Yeah. So this thing, you can see it. You know, RoboCop. I think has a much larger following the video game because of its appearance on the ZX Spectrum, where it was one of these you know yeah. top selling. We games like of that all one. Time. I'm pretty good. Uh, but to me, for this, you know, e even in the arcade, they had this over the skate arena. I always thought that this thing moved way too slow and was way too hard. So it, it's it, and the aim, uh, the gun aiming is odd. Yeah. It's it's real. It's it's difficult to to get a grip with. Yeah. So if you show the bottom video there, it actually has some gameplay footage. Uh, you can see that RoboCop looks great. He sort of shambles around uh, like he does in the arcade. Uh, the and but you know on the plus side, like you said, the cityscape is very well. This is a very 1980s dystopian type, you know, Detroit cityscape. Uh, so you've got that going for you. But this is one that I am not quite so excited about. I think it, uh, it, they're doing a great job. Listen, if you're going to port this, they do the best yeah, you can. Yeah, so. yeah. If you're a fan of RoboCop, yeah. you should check it, it out. Looks, it looks good. Now, one Aaron, of these days, I'll watch the show. I still haven't watched it. This next story is a game that I've been waiting all week to get your thoughts on because I want to know if you've heard of this thing. This is called Blake Stone Aliens of Gold. And yes. according to Indie Retro News, it's a classic first-person shooter game from 1993 that runs on the Wolfenstein engine. Yeah, yeah. Have you played this one? Have I played it? Well, I don't think I ever played it, but I was aware of its existence, the Blake Stone. Uh, you know, it, it's a, more of a sci-fi version of a Wolfenstein-type engine, as I recall. Uh, it's not one I played. Uh, it's, <laughs> I'm trying to think. In, uh, this came out in, when, what year did it say? 93. I'm trying to think what PC I would have had. See, I, in '93, I was I, I was using the Amiga, mm -hmm. and so I had left. I wasn't full of this stuff that much, so this is one that I didn't play. So they're porting this over. What's yeah. it going to need to run? I hesitate to ask. Uh, well, according to this, it's uh, it, you need a 030 with at least four <laughs> megs of fast RAM. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and it says just don't expect it to be too good. Uh, no, it says just don't expect what? it to be playable at 14 megahertz. It required a 386 on the PC as well. So something tells me it's not going to be super, super awesome unless you have a Mega Amiga. Well, luckily, through emulation, we can all have the best Amigas ever made. That's so right. If you want to go play but then on the flip side, you could also just emulate the DOS version and not bother. True, either way. true. But still kind of neat. And for people with high-end Amigas that like to 
Have something to put on that sucker. There you go. There you go. Now, Aaron, this next one I am totally stoked about. Metro Siege. Remember Metro Siege, Aaron? No. This is <laughs> this is the brawler. This is like the the, the fatal oh, fury or the yes. final fight brawler. Yes, this is the one okay. that we read about last year. Yeah. yeah. Now this thing, check this out, Aaron. This is running. You want to talk about getting it done. This is running on an A five hundred with one mega RAM. Oh wow. That's it. That, okay. And this is is this two simultaneous two player? Wow, look at that. That looks great, dude. All I've got to say is eat it, AGA. Oh, they, would you get over the AGA Let's, thing? let's see something like that run on that horrible chipset. Maybe maybe they'll... <laughs> You're such an idiot. Listen, look, I look at that guy. Got like a, I see it. Look at that cop. He looks like you. I don't have a shield like that or a haircut. You should. I wish I had that guy's hair. That this looks real good. It looks great. Have they have they put out a, a, any idea when they're going to release this? Uh, it looks like they are. It's still they're still working on it. Uh, no, uh, but it will feature two player co op. Oh man, so, look at that! This that looks really good. Yeah, this is coming. This comes to us from Pixel Glass. Pixel Glass. Man, uh, hey, good job, fellas. Keep it keep it going. Take as long as you need to make it awesome. That yeah. looks great. And coming up next, Aaron. We have the story of the week, of course. Oh, man. This is the Amiga 500 Mini. It's finally been released. Uh, the, uh, the, the embargo is up, and we've heard from every corner of the internet about yeah. this thing. Finally, someone, we, of course, we've linked Dan, our good buddy Dan, uh, and Dan is the first guy I've seen do this that I had any idea what an Amiga fully is i think well i was going to say you know we we've seen hundreds it feels like of these videos pop up this past week i've watched nearly all of them and I this have is too. this is the first one that really does it justice it's nice to have somebody that knows and cares about the amiga do one of these reviews instead of your garden variety full-time youtuber you know i i cut a promo on you boat early this week it wasn't on you it was just to you i how and, and voice my displeasure with this uh, now, we are not a huge LGR size channel, or, or Metal Jesus, or these other guys. Mm -hmm. you know, we know our, we, oh, I mean, I know what we are, but uh, we do know, uh, I told you, we did have some inroads. I was hoping at least, I'm not saying get me the early copy, but I mean, I'd like to have a go at this thing. Uh, but no, uh, they sent these to everyone you would expect. Uh, thank God Dan got a chance to look at one, but I mean... You know, did did uh, Doug get one? No. Did Chris get one? No. Did you know? Uh, uh, it's it. So Dan was basically the rep, the Amiga representative here. Now I did notice that when Dan turned this on, he didn't stare at the screen like he'd been struck by lightning, <laughs> and light didn't shoot out of it like the Ark of the, the Lord Covenant. Didn't speak to him. No, it's, it's amazing when yeah. you're not out of your mind what mm. you can do. And what Dan, what Dan does here is gives you an honest. Uh, review of this thing. He goes through the games, and of course, Dan played all these games, so he knows what he's talking mm -hmm. about. He goes through, I mean, let's call it what it is. All right, this is what the old Amy Berry on a on a risk uh, process, or not a risk, but a uh, arm arm processor. A risk would be better uh, on an arm <laughs> processor. Uh, it's emul. It's it is what we thought it was. It's not. It, you know, it looks slick. They, it came with the patented uh, USB drive full of WHD load stuff. So they could skirt that. Uh, I, I already I, I sent Laurent Giroux a message to get his, because uh, you know how he's super oh, yeah. hardcore against that stuff. Uh, but uh, it looked fine. It, it, in fact, it ran fast. It, it reminded me very much in terms of the way it ran this stuff of the Unamiga, which is slightly too fast. But good with good compatibility. That it doesn't seem like they had, Dan had really any, that much trouble uh, with it. Uh, I really the joysticks look solid. The, mm -hmm. I will say the unit looks outstanding. Yeah, All right. they the, did a great oh, job on the fit and finish of the, the it unit did. itself. It looks the like you can hit good. that keyboard and it would work. Yeah, uh, the uh, the joystick looks. I haven't felt it, but it looks good. Mm -hmm. The pad looks good. I would have swapped. The, the the menu and start buttons I would have swapped their position but that's neither here nor there and uh, the uh, the mouse looked thankfully looked good and yeah. not prototype like it did in the other video so the the actual guts of this thing look I mean the actual stuff that comes with it looks good mm -hmm. and what Dan actually does is he the, I think he's the only one that I've seen at least he actually gets uh, Workbench 1.3 up and running on this yeah. thing. And uh, he says that everything works except for all of the system utilities. So the, you yeah. know, the sys info the, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's able to run, you know, D-Paint and all these different things right from the workbench. So it looks like that this thing is going to be a capable system 
And if you're looking for something that looks aesthetically pleasing, that gives you that Amiga experience, this looks like it's going to fit the bill. So I'm pleasantly surprised by this review, and I'm glad that it doesn't suck, because I, one's on its way to you, Aaron. We've been speculating about this. This is even tops our speculation on the uh, on the old, uh, 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 what was the game? We, we were going to give away a million years, and we kept waiting with the Cinemaware game, Defender, oh, the, Defender the, Crown. the Crown. yeah. This tops, and so we've just been talking about this forever, mm -hmm. and it's funny that here it is. Right. You know, uh, so I mean, there. I guess there should have been much about here. There's a couple things I'd like to have seen, I would have liked to have seen a uh, wireless uh, controller because it sort of defeats the purpose of having it up beside your TV if there's a wire there. Maybe I, but that's too much to ask. Well, yeah, and again, like the Nintendo, the Nintendo mini consoles, they don't have wireless controllers. I know, so. I know, but, but with the, this would be a lot. Of because we're talking about the, the the good thing about this is that if you could put it beside your TV and sit on your couch, right. then you got something. I mean, it's still something, but that would be nice. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll... You know, well, you, it's a wireless US. You could use any wireless USB yeah, controller. That's what I'm thinking. So maybe you could rig it. And also, since uh, I've got in on that Kickstarter with the wireless mouse, mm -hmm. I guess it had to get over a threshold before you get uh, the uh, dongle. But mm -hmm. it did get it over did. the threshold. So maybe it'd be nice if you could. Stick I should have included that. We'll do that next week on Amiga News. You, it'd be nice if we could uh, insert the dongle in this thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then right. Uh, and then you got the wireless keyboard, and, or I mean, wireless mouse and the wireless controller. That'd be nice. So yeah. it's something to think about. I think as a as a wireless unit, this would be real. It's pretty awesome. This would be much more awesome then, especially since it's set up to have the remote keyboard that comes from the side of the screen mm -hmm. and everything you can do with the joystick in mind. Right. Not too bad. Yeah. But, and that's really, I think that's the selling point. Or to people that are just either don't want to spend the money or don't have the knowledge to do a proper Amiga setup. I saw a lot of people killing this thing all week. And the price is too high, I think. And it'll come down, as mm, we know. It'll come down. But for your average person who, like, I know people, like my good friend Jerry, he had an Amiga, but it's been decades. He can't remember all the intricacies of mm -hmm. getting his stuff running. Mm -hmm. And if you can provide him a nice gift and say, listen, plug this into your computer, it comes right up with games. Very nice. You yeah. know, or the Chud. Mm -hmm. If I said, Chud, here's hybrids. You always like this game. You might enjoy something like that. Absolutely. So it's, uh, it, I think there's room for it. There's no reason to kill it. If, if anything, it shows that the the Amiga's the prominence and standing is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. And so it should, I think this thing should be embraced. It probably won't be. Well, not here in the States, but it'll be embraced in Europe. Well, I mean, when I, I mean by our people, the community. They yeah. should not. There's well, no listen, reason to the kill Amiga this. community is not going to rally around anything. Well, you can't I, expect that. Listen, I'm just saying, it, it looks it looks like a solid piece of kit. Absolutely. You know, and I, it's, I'm happy we, you know, we speculated for years, would it ever come out? What would it look like? It looks like it did come out, and it did a good job. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go, Boaster. All right, that's going to do it for this week's Amiga News, Aaron. It's time to talk about what's been going on on the old YouTube channel. Oh, man, the YouTube channel. I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up, Boat, because we've had double trouble this week. Uh, let's start off with uh, our Amiga Retro Gaming YouTube channel here. Just a couple releases this week, uh, Boat. Uh, one of them was the old Coco show. Tell yeah. us about it, Bo. So this was The Amazing World of Malcolm Mortar, the most unfortunately named game ever to appear on the Tandy Color computer. What do you mean? You don't like B-Rick? Yeah. He's For, like a rapper. If, you're, if you name the game The Amazing Adventures of Malcolm Mortar and you don't play as Malcolm Mortar, guess what? You yeah. done screwed up. Okay. <laughs> it's the world of Malcolm Mortar, to be fair. Yeah, it's the world and of... you're stuck in it, because yeah. you're B-Rick. It's a shame, because this game is actually super, super unique and really fun to play. Yeah, I really like this game. It's a Coco 3 exclusive, Yeah, um, and you can check out our full review on the Coco show. Yeah, this is a lot. This game is it's wacky. Mm -hmm. It takes a little... It, there's a learning curve. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty deep for a Coco game. Absolutely. But I, 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 did, I did enjoy it, uh, Boat. Uh, our own, uh, the other offering was myself and the Brent. Mm -hmm. Be one of the several to come check this out. Because this week we did games that and basically we were involved in. Games involving ARG, myself and the Brent. And we feature a couple games, including uh, one that just came out last week. I want to talk about uh, our buddy uh, Paul Kitching's offering. You know, me and my brother covered a game called Gulp. And I used game in its loosenses because this wasn't a game. It didn't even end. Mm -hmm. You just finished the board and just sat there. And I complained about it a lot. You may remember that episode. Mm -hmm, I did. And so Paul Kitching was like, you know what? I can do it. 
And he did. He, he took did. up the challenge and he made Gulpy. Gulpy is a uh, browser-based game using the Amos 2 engine. I mean, it's got a new name for it. And uh, he re not only did he recreate Gulp, but he made it all 50 billion times better by expanding the horizons of Gulp exponentially. And he makes basically versions of Gulp all the way up from the... Uh, Old days to the new days. So you've got a VIC-20 version. You've got the Amiga. You've got the C64. They're all in there, including a wacky ARG level, which me and myself, uh, me and the Brent are in. Our little faces mm -hmm. are in there. It plays, like my, it plays my wacky song mm -hmm. on the Pro Trucker song. So this was a lot more fun than you would think it was. There's a lot of strategy he had and pickups. I think it's great. I, I strongly suggest you check that out when he releases it. The other game we picked out, we've talked about this a few times, uh, a boat. You want to pronounce this the correct way because I've been getting hammered here. Shea Maxim. Is That's that all it is. Shea Maxim. ZX version. Yeah. And this is from our good buddy Happy Cody, who's in the room right now. Paul's here too. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, so both the both the authors of these games are in in chat. Uh, and Happy, of course, this thing. Whew, it's great. It's been well received too. Oh, yeah. I've heard. Oh yeah. Uh, and so uh, people are clamoring for an NES version of this game. I saw that. Yeah. And wouldn't that be something? That would be. That would be awesome. Uh, I can see it. I'd love to see it on a real console. Oh, listen to you. Well, listen. Hey, the ZX is a computer. It did a good That's job. Right. Hey, you could put it on the ZX console. Yeah. The Vega. <laughs> something could be on there. Not the Vega. You knucklehead. <laughs> anyway, check this thing out. We had a good time doing this, and uh, uh, I want to thank the uh, Paul and Happy for like giving us a shot, brother. It's nice to be involved in, in something like that. Uh, it was a lot, a lot of fun for us. Um, let's talk about. And I want to, I want to pitch this channel yet again. Uh, please check out the Amigos. To be honest, this team. is the first time that we pitched it. So you're not also, did it we again. not? No. Did we not mention it last week? No. Holy smokes, that would explain a yeah. lot. We started a new channel, yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. It's called the Amigos Stream Team. Mm. All three words. Please subscribe. Uh, subscribe soon. Uh, this is a channel where we're putting all of our streamed content, Boat. That's right. And this channel is going to have a ton of content. All right, of the disaster boat. streams, all of the uh, flack Wednesday night streams, all of Frodo's wacky retro streams. Yeah, uh, stuff I've got set on the hard drive. Right. Thanks for giving stuff is going yeah. to be in there. If we ever find a Megathon from last year, that might be lost. I thought, in the midst I, not, of time. I thought I put that up. Didn't I already? I may have already listed. If I didn't, I'll put it yeah, up. Yeah, there's no Amiga 2021 content. So on we, we put up a ton of stuff. I'm just going to briefly go over some of this stuff, and some of it I'll go in more in depth. Uh, if you missed last week's uh, show, uh, myself and the boat. Don't you hate when that happens? That never there? happens to me. I don't know how you uh, do that. Uh, Lord. Click on weird. So things. if you missed our, me, me and Boat got together a rare uh, uh, stream together mm. last night for the disaster stream where we played. We danced uh, around. We danced around. We acted dumb <laughs> and we played Sega Saturn games. Two big hours of Sega Saturn. We played the good, the bad, and everything in the middle. Well, it was mostly the bad. It was mostly honest. the bad. <laughs> when we started out with the WWF games, I thought, man, we're, it's all going to be good from here. No, it was much, much worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say, since we did this, I have fully decked out the Saturn with everything. We'll be a ready next time. Yeah, so the next time we do this, we'll have a, a, a bunch, bunch more stuff. But if you like hours of just me and Boat bickering about these how bad these games are, <laughs> I guess we weren't really bickering, were we? No, we were in full we agreement. agreement. Yeah. Uh, check this out. We had a lot of fun. Uh, that was the Sega Saturn. Uh, I also stuck... I'm going to start putting out the all the thanks for givings from last November. We already had one out, so I want to list them, but for completeness sake, I put it back up. So if you, uh, next week, I'll probably release the second one. Now, I want to get into these because I watched our buddy Jack Flack. You know, he was on vacation yeah. a while back, but, and he came back this week like a maniac, mm. like a madman, and he played uh, some games. The, he did the Donkey Kong. He did two streams this week. The first one I want to talk about is Donkey Kong for the Atari, which is funny. Why is that funny, Bo? Because we're doing it on 1200XL tomorrow. That's right. You want to talk about tomorrow real so quick? So tomorrow, guys, uh, check us out. We're going to start at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and we are going to record live all of the shows for the next month, including 1200XL, which we're going to be covering Donkey Kong, the Atari ST show, where it's meet me, Roadrunner. We're going to do the Coco show all about time. It's not time pilot, time patrol. Yeah. Time Patrol. Don't get us sued. Buddy. Totally different than Time Patrol. Konami will come after And of course, ZX Spectrum, we have not forgotten about you. R. Sinclair takes a look at Jack the Nipper. Oh, man. Yeah. Jack the Nipper. So, uh, But in line with that, Flack has a go here at, at the uh, 
at the Atari vs. Donkey Kong. Uh, and this is, I believe, this is, is this, this is the one before it was the modified That's version correct. that you looked at. You can now, tell because Kong looks like he's a, so he's, sad. Yeah, he's sullen. I don't know why he's so <laughs> sad. It's funny. Well, we'll get into it. But yeah, Flack, and of course, it's also Jack Flack. He so needs some dental work. Look at his teeth yeah, here. He, That's why he's sad. Flack does a, another great job. Flack also has a, a lovely red glow, which I'm, <laughs> looks like he got too much sun. So check, he's down in Gatlinburg, sun country. Check that out now. He had to double up this week, and this was a... Oh, man. man. Now, I have not seen this one yet. I, I caught the, most of this one. I missed the very beginning. And this was... This was Bo... Or this was Bo. This was Jack Black playing Archon Ultra. Now, which of the Archon games is Ultra? Is so that the Archon third one? Archon Ultra is a sort of a remake of Archon, the original Archon. Okay. And with upgraded graphics, so it's, they sound. flipped the board and they made it look like a chessboard. Well, it always looked like that. No, because it's the you're you got two guys on the other the opposite sides in Archon. You don't have them coming down at each other; they're coming across at each other. Right, but I'm saying it's always on a chessboard. Oh yeah, board, yeah. I'm, I'm saying. just saying they flipped the script. It's got, they've got like a battle chess thing going on yeah. here. Uh, and Flack, I caught the second game he played, and this game, listen, it's fun to watch Flack. He's an entertaining guy. Yes. Okay, and he plays Best games. In business. Okay, and but now. He doesn't always play the best games. No. Or he doesn't always do well at the games he plays, right? And sometimes he just gets crushed. Sometimes he looks like a big old geek. Okay. However, the the second the last game of all Archon Ultra he plays is down to the wire. It is awesome. I sat back, I watched the whole thing intently to see how he did. It was a beautiful, masterful comeback. I'm not gonna give away the ending. But I strongly urge you to uh, to check this out. It was very entertaining. If you're into Ar- Archon at all, and Archon Ultra is a it's a game that has its fans. Some people likes it. Some Where people do don't you like stand? It. Where do you stand? When it first came out, I didn't like it. Uh, but I then I tried it again, and I thought, eh. So you call it a game you came around on? I'm not there yet. It's not that I'm not there yet. It's a game that I may come around on. You know, when you play the original for so long, it's hard to come around on something that's, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, so, but anyway, this is a great stream, and I believe this will be the subject of the next Like a DOS, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I can't wait for that. If I'm wrong, Flack, drop me a note there, but I think that's, and switch, that'll be great, because mm-hmm. the Archon series, you know, who you know, I love it. I yeah. love it both. Um, here's one I just put up. Uh, just the other night. This was uh, from a few months ago. One of my personal favorite of all time. This is? Dreams. I love, anytime you stream Coco, it makes my heart happy. But when you go the DICOM route, <laughs> that's is, when it's... That's when, this is our tribute to DICOM, the uh, obscure clone maker for the Coco. This is me, on. this is on a genuine Coco, hooked up. Had a little color trouble here and there, but by God, don't got worry. Work. Next time, I've got the RGB yeah. gimmick. We're gonna uh, go to town. And and this was uh, all, uh, as many games as I could fit in to a couple hours of the DICOM stuff. And you get every sort of clone uh, that you could think of. Stuff like uh, bouncing boulders, Gladrial, F nineteen, Gantlet. Yeah, I uh, love Gantlet. My personal favorite karate. <laughs> this was great. I'm seriously, we're gonna play this on the okay. on Coco. Okay. Paper route, marble maze. Mm-hmm. You might be able to figure out what these were by the name, uh, but I had a lot of fun uh, playing them. And then lastly, hot off the presses. You know, he, he had to be in here. He's a cornerstone uh, of the new channel here. It's our buddy Frodo, and Frodo is added again. Modern homebrew games for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. We saw the NES, mm-hmm. uh, and now it's time to get the Mega Drive involved. And I don't know what kind of... I know there is a decent homebrew, because I bought a homebrew for ARG last year that was really good. Right. that was a good game. Uh, and so we know that they've got some quality stuff coming out. Uh, and Frodo goes to work with three and a half hours of brand new stuff uh, for the for the Genesis. I haven't got to see this yet, but I'm actually uh, going to be watching this later tonight. Should be a lot of fun. Frodo, I just talked to Frodo this week. I caught some of his stream yesterday he's great he, he, he's got such a uh, an imaginative thing going on he's such a friendly guy i would love to meet frodo in real life and just hang out with him for a mm-hmm. while he's a real steady dude man so please check out uh frodo's modern homebrew games for the sega genesis slash mega drive uh, again that is on our new channel the amigos stream team that's uh, three words on youtube check us out uh, part of the reason we moved, we uh, stuck a new channel in here 
It's like Boat said, we had all this extra content that was just going to the wayside. But also, this is a channel that's going to be community driven. So if anyone's interested in maybe having a, a stream posted on here uh, or would like to do something exclusively for the channel, uh, get with us on Discord, Boat, right. and we'll and we'll get you set up. Uh, we'll have some stuff on here from the Team Speaker regulars. Uh, they're going to throw some stuff on here. And so uh, we thought it would be fun to get the community more involved. And so we're hoping to get a lot of people to sign up to check them out uh, and to uh, check out some of our streaming content that has largely gone unseen because of, we didn't have anywhere to put it. Right. So right. there you go, Boatster. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our community updates section this week, Aaron. It's time for the most exciting moment of Amigos when we announce the Patreon song winner from last week. Oh, man. Nobody got it. Well, I'm not surprised, Boat. Nobody got it. I'm not surprised. I, you know, it, it's. It, I honestly thought that at least one person would get this, especially since it was a full band. It wasn't me just spouting nonsense. Well, it was, but um, <laughs> it was uh, Light Up My Room by Bare Naked Ladies. Sort of a deep cut, but I figured we got some Canadian people. You know, they're like gods in Canada. Yeah, so, that's where Frank's at, for yeah, example. Right. So, um, so anyway, uh, sorry, we suck. No, what's um, this we crap? Hold on. Me and the, me and the June bugs. I'm not, I, I never include you of in anything I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not musically talented enough. I thought it was a good song, though, but I thought, you know, it's uh, seriously, this is a shoot. It's one of my top five favorite songs of all time. Oh, man. I was, I so was, this was, this was, was double was, crippling. It was double brutal for me. So... This time, Aaron, I'm going to do it a cappella. Oh, man. Okay? If you right. know this week's Patreon Song Challenge, please send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. And uh, if you're in the chat, please refrain from posting the answer. Should you know it, uh, send me an email and said I will announce you as a winner on next week's show. Oh, man. Pets of Arm, Alva Kemp, we like what? We like Mr. Chip Peter, Price Herman D, Wonderly Chesum, Mark Richardson, David Hearn, Rambo K, Rambo K, David Harris, Drew Carlos Bath, Mubus, the Phantom Magnus, Seth Yates, Alistair Fiend, Chris Russell, David Z. Rosensky, the Mika Show, Daniel Crabtree, Super Camp King, Crazy Loomis, William Venter, Scar Heavy Systems, Zing Petty Frag, Lord Mark, Bile and Olaf, Home from Ski, and the Inman Reader, Dave Law, Sir Raptor, Calvert, Boiling Dents, and Manuel Williams, Luke and Sam Bomb, Six the Bass, Frodo and El, Sol and Sizer, Tech Major Gun, Mr. Cole, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennings, and Zirkel, Reflections, Solomon Lake, Gavin Crispy, Kit, Kittle Bites, and Caffeine, Gary Heather, Free Lunch, Kater Fox, Devin Pickett, Camera Arms Arm, Andy Jones, Observinator, Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast, Bernard Quinn, RMC, Tim Drew, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Ed, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Larimore, Andy Craig Sonzo, Mark Bid, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, Leif Geland, Alan Kebab, Check, Cote Level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy, Pinky, Ricky Z, this Lord Norris, the Bugs, Orgon Mortensen, and Ben Helen, Christopher Hassel, Chris Foles, Lauren Sheru, Crab, Pinky, Adam Bathos, Bill Brands, Richard Fitches, Gary Huck, Gail Harrington, Pumpkin Style Saves from the Crib, Josh Nat, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, T. She, Eric Nelson, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Cole, Jason Warren, Pixel Dawn, and Kill Bjorn Barman. <laughs> listen, so how are you going to? That's sort of a medley, isn't it? Yeah, it's sort of a medley. That's the, listen. If you get all, however many there were, you get extra points. The sad thing is, well, I'm not going to give it away, but the beginning of it, I really didn't have any idea what you were doing. It was the fanfare. It took, it took quite a while for me to. To figure out, you know, what was going on with the uh, with that little tune. It, interesting. Yeah. I'm sure someone will pick this one up, Bode. All right, Aaron. It's also time to thank the glorious, glorious people that uh, support us on Twitch. You know, we record the show every Friday around five o'clock. We'd love it if you would uh, if you would watch us live because you get to participate in the chat. It's always a good time. Makes the show so much more fun for us. Uh, the following people subscribe on Twitch and give us a couple bucks every month. The Mr. Chip, Pixel Rageous, Lubin808, Christian Russell, Pishbot, Amistuff, Real Retro Dude, 
Thurso Bard, Amiga Live, Jost 80, Great Al G, John Marshall 3, Boomer Scuba Diver, Wing Chun Wolf, Grizzla, Zuper Dan, Jason Warns, Explorer, Buck Owens, Oil of Hope, Barkbit, Still Adolescing, Scumboy, Jabba Sock, Edvin Helen, Retro Rewind.ca, Frodo NL, Makahan, Jigglebox, Wide World of Retro, Gary Heather, Twilight Zoner, Negsol, Blip Blop, Honored Shadow, Captain Chaos DK, Mitsuyama, Orom, Retro Jerry, Eor 4077, Matt Dufort, Blow Jellyfish, and Da Crabs, MTG. There it is. All right, Aaron. What do we got coming up next week? Well, we've got something coming up this week. Before we do anything else, I want to take a special moment. Oh, yeah. Talk about our good buddy, our good friend, Bam. You know him. You love him. It's our friend, Frank. Over at RetroRewind.ca, boat. Bam. Listen, I was recapping something today, believe it or not. What a pain. Uh, it happened to be a, a console, and I was like, man, digging these caps up is a pain. And I've got professional dude equipment at, mm -hmm. back at the pad. Listen. PDE is what they call it. Listen, you could botch these things in a heartbeat. Bam. Oh, your old school crap gone. All right. Don't be, uh, uh, don't take a chance. Don't be a sketchy tech. No, no, especially with your classic Amiga or Commodore stuff or your Coco stuff. Don't be in there fiddling around with that big fat solder iron you got at Radio Shack 27 years ago. You know, with solder, it's been sitting on the shelf for 13 That's years. That's my move. I use a real thick solder, too. You don't have flux. You're using human spit. Yep. Ugh, to get that thing lubed up. No a good. Sponge. Big loogie. Sponge worthy. Call our good friend, Frank, at RetroRewind.ca. He will recap your... C64, your C16, your C128. He'll recap your Amiga 500, 600, 1200, your CD TV, your CD32. He'll do it all, brother. If you got a Coco back in the pad, Coco 1, 2, 3, he'll recap all those suckers. Mm -hmm. He'll do whatever it takes to make you happy. He's got professional equipment. He's got skills that were ground up over decades of work. He's been going to work doing these things professionally, as long as the hardware's been around. He's intimate with it. He's the man for the job. I just saw a tweet this week from another satisfied customer of his. He just completed doing some hardware work for her, uh, and she was tickled pink. She, he's a good hard worker. He does it quick. He does it cheap, but Yeah, and you can save 10% off this or any order at Retro Rewind by using the promo code AMIGOS10 at checkout. We thank RetroRewind.ca for being an official sponsor of Amigos. Absolutely. Thank you, Frank. Now, Aaron, it's time for the grand reveal. What shall be next? Let's on find Amigos? out. He says, bam, Venus Flytrap. Oh. What the hell is that? Well, it's Venus the Flytrap. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that changes That's even things. dumber. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gremlin game, so it may be good. You've you've had uh, some salty things to say about Gremlin in the past. I've never I've never. In fact, I think Gremlin. everything associated with the Amiga, you've poured salt on it sometimes, salty. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot Gremlin was Zool worth it. <laughs> so yes, yes I have. So there you go. So that, I mean, I've never heard of this one of you. <laughs> no, you played this no, one me so. either. It'll be a good one though. I can tell. We want to thank. <laughs> what do you base that on? The box art. Look how cool he looks. <laughs> well, He's box like, art, ah. The box art looks okay. Yeah. So. Guys, thank you as always for listening. We will see you next week. Until then, adios. adios.